You have a prepaid call. You will not be charged for this call. This call is from... Wes. Hello, Wes. An inmate at a federal prison. Hello? Hi, how are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm just fine. All right. Hey, tell me a story. Okay. Are, uh, hey, uh... Are we having a beer? Huh? Are you having a beer? I wish I was. Okay, I'll have one for you. Oh, you bastard. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking about that. I said, you, he's coming home and he's just sitting down cracking a beer and i got to do all this work here. I'm getting the feeling for you. Yeah. We'll turn on the recorder. We'll see how it works. Okay, good. Ready. All right. After hooking up with uh, Judy and Lake Charles, and yeah. I had a whole bag of money, so we decided we're going to go on an adventure. <laughs> School was just letting out. And uh, Lee was, in the, I believe he was in the second grade. I think he was eight uh -huh. years old. Uh -huh. We swung by the school and took him, picked him right up. We were all packed up and we had uh, piled in my truck. My truck only had two bucket seats in it, but we put the cooler between the seats so he could have a place to sit, put a little pillow out there, and we, we headed east. Nice. And... I don't remember if it was the first day or the second day. We stopped in uh, Biloxi and bought a local paper, a nickel one out or something. I can't remember exactly where I found the information, but I was just summoned to it and I come across the houseboat up on the Ross Burnett Dam in Jackson, Mississippi. And this whole time, this whole trip, I kept telling Judy, we're going to buy a sailboat. I'm going to take you across the big wall and all that stuff. Well, she was growing up on the water, but she wasn't too sure about going across the big wall, wall you know, especially with me, somebody she just met, you know, right. three months ago. So right. this was kind of a relief to her that we were going to get a little diversion and go on a houseboat instead of a sailboat. So anyway, we went up to... Jackson, when we looked at the boat, it belonged to a kid who was in college. He wanted 19000 for it. We just talked him down to some ridiculous figure, nine or 10000 We went down to the uh, credit union and paid it off. And it was over, so we started living on it. But, damn, there was nowhere to go. So we decided, let's just have a real Huck Finn, Huck Finn or whatever his name was, uh, Okay. Adventure, uh -huh. and see if we can get a truck to come pick this thing up. I, it was 50 feet long, but I wasn't too sure how wide it was, if, uh, what the legal requirements were. But we went to a marina up there, and the guy says, I know a guy that'll he'll take it on the back roads if necessary, whatever it takes. He says, he'll get it up there. I said, well, come on. Have him come down, take a look, and we'll see what we're going to do. So we pulled the boat out. He backed the trailers out in the water, and uh, we painted, put a coat of bottom paint on it, and we took off. And we're following him in my pickup truck, and he's going all over the place because it was a little bit taller than 15 feet, so he couldn't go underneath any of the bridges and stuff. But we finally get to uh, uh, some place we stopped for the night. I don't even remember, and we're sitting around drinking beer and talking. He says, you know... Uh, Memphis, he says, I'm not going to be able to get it downtown Memphis. He says, there's just no way. It's just too tall. I, I just don't know any way I'm going to get in there without getting caught or something. Yeah. So he says, the next best thing is Lake Ferguson in Greenville, Mississippi. He says, that's a beautiful place. You'll have a good time there. There's a little Mickey Mouse marina there and a yacht club and a nice levee. He says, I can, I'm pretty sure I could just back this thing right back down into the lake. So he told me, yeah, that sounds good, so. Go for it. <laughs> so we pull up finally. It's a levee right at downtown Greenville. And look down this levee. This levee is awesome. It's like on a, oh, I can't, I can't remember the degree, but it's like 25 degrees oh. or something. It is steep. And I'm thinking, when he backs down there, the goddamn boat's going to slide right off the trailer because it's not chained on there or nothing. It's just the weight of the boat. It's so big. <laughs> it's sitting on these hydraulic little paddles. And 
I'm thinking, God damn, this thing's going to work, man. The engines in the back of this 50-footer were under fiberglass compartments, but they weren't anywhere near watertight. And when we yeah. back this thing down in the water, that's the first thing that's going to go into water is the whole back end of this boat before it starts to float. Yeah. We thought, wow, this thing's going to work, man. This whole back thing's going to float full of water. That's where the generators and the engines are. And it's not going to, you know, it's going to work. So I don't think we can do this. We're going to find someplace else to put it in the water. So anyway, <laughs> Judy says, 200 mile an hour tape. My daddy said 200 mile an hour tape fix anything. <laughs> so that's what it was. We taped all the ducts, the vents, and everything yeah. closed. And the guy says, here's the deal, man. He says, I'm going to run it down there, and then when I get to the like, halfway point, I'm going to slam on the brakes. This boat's going to slide off in the water, and I'm going to try to get my truck up the, yeah. up the hill and out of there, right? So I'm on the boat. I've, I've already started the engines. It's going to start right up. So I'm not worried about that. So here we go. We back the thing down in the water. Sure enough, water comes all the way over, almost everything. This call is from a federal prison. From the from the deck, and I hit the engines, and it started, and it just started floating, bobbing around out there. So I ran back and pulled the tape off the vents and everything. Anything, anyway, it turned out marvelous. We backed it over to the marina and hooked up the electricity and all of it. We were the idiots of the day, so everybody came down there and talked to us, looked at the boat and stuff, and we said we were going to go down to Mississippi, and they all just shook their head like, oh, these goddamn people are crazy as hell, you know? Uh-huh. Well, we spent, oh, a good three months there. We were just partying and having a good time. I wanted to get the generator overhauled, so we took the generator out and took it up to Memphis, got it overhauled, brought it back, and then every Friday night, we would go out in the center of the lake and put down our anchor. And because we had this big new generator, everybody would come pull alongside us and hook up. We had a little floating city out there just partying all the way from Friday night to Monday morning. And then supposedly we were going to go down the river, but every Monday morning we had such a hangover, we just put it off for another week. <laughs> so months went by. I don't know how many. Maybe five months went by. Finally, we said, well, we, we've got to go. Well, first, we're going to go up to Memphis. 